back again. Cheers. And the good news is, look, this is the first drink for the night, so uh, <laughs> it's only going to get better, guys. Uh, Wadari, this is the third edition of this game, a game, uh, magazine, sorry, guys. And love the cover, love the artwork. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They've changed the font inside. Uh, I keep forgetting the name of this guy. Roy, Roy Matheson. Uh, so he, he writes a nice introduction here. And uh, I, I, this game, this magazine is growing on me. The first edition I really was not very impressed with. I didn't like the artwork at all. I thought one of the articles was either, it was, had, you know, had, two, three, four, or five pages of freaking footnotes. What a waste of paper, right? Okay, so you're a genius and you read everything. Do we need to have all that in there? Uh, and the article was incredibly long and factually incorrect in, in one or two instances. So it was a kind of a disappointment. Second uh, volume comes out. Fantastic. Great job. Lots of little uh, capsule reviews in there, which most of them were pretty good. Third edition's out, and I tell you, man, this is great. So Mike Ranella, who's a designer on his own, right, uh, has written a fantastic summary of Operation Market Garden. And uh, I have not finished all of this article, so I can't really tell you 100% about it. But I've, I'm enjoying it so far because it's summary in nature, and it's really giving me a good feel and flavor for the battle, uh, more so than any other... Uh, 10 or 13 page article I've read. So great job and it uh, whets my appetite for Market Garden titles. So that's in of itself a valuable tool or article to have if you're trying to decide whether or not you want to read uh, more about the Market Garden or play games about the Market Garden. This would be a great place to start to see if this, uh, this you know lights your fire, right? So really excellent job on this article. I enjoyed it immensely. So, I, and it's a, it's a long article. It has a nice, concise uh, bibliography at the end. Very well done. Uh, this is an interesting article, Washington's War by Nels Thompson. I was uh, I was in two minds about this as as I was reading it. At first, it, it really struck me that I had not given uh, Herman's title uh, credit enough when I played it or allowed the insight of this gentleman writing, Nell's writing about it to filter into my play. I, I, I've read this and gone, wow, man, I really kind of shortchanged that title. Maybe it's a lot better than I thought it was. And if I had to step back and if I had to know more about the American Revolution, maybe I would have understood, uh, understood what the game was trying to portray. And so I'm a dumbass and I should go play that game again. That's what I took away about halfway through the article. As I got further into this, I have a sneaking suspicion that this, this becomes a much more of a historical article as, the, as it goes on, which is good. But it almost feels like this is a precursor for this chap is, trying, is either designing a game or using Washington War System as a, uh, a baseline for one of his own designs. I, I don't know. But that's kind of what I felt like. This was kind of positioning itself the article was positioning itself for uh, a new game that this guy might be making and in fact I think he is making a design of some sort he's designing something on the American war so uh, I, I, the, the more you read into the article you start feeling that he's highlighting things that need to be added to the game to make it a better game still a really interesting article and I think I need to go back and play Washington's War one day all right, that was cool. This, uh, Vance von Boris, you, we all know who he is, you know, the guy, designer of uh, the Eastern Front series, which I sold because you're going to get that freaking thing over the P500 and you're going to redesign, fix the rules, and it's going to be fabulous and integrated so I can play three or four modules together, right? Let's do that, Vance. Uh, really, really interesting article. Fantastic uh, level of historical detail about a, a not well-known uh part of the war uh, on the Eastern Front. I am not even going to try and pronounce the Demyansk. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I recall that part of the map uh, from my plan of Case Blue. 
And I recall uh, that we didn't have any of the issues that are here, thank God, because this is uh, brutal. Uh, great. But anyway, this is just well worth reading. Uh, then there's this article on the Maori Wars uh, in the making, and John is writing about his title. And I'll, I'm just going to skip through all this, but I want you to see the map. And it's only black and white, unfortunately. And this, game, this magazine would be really cool if it was in color. Uh, look at that map of uh, northern New Zealand. That's going to be beautiful. I would buy the game probably, I bet, just for that in color and frame it and put it on my wall. It's just gorgeous. Anyway, he has a nice long uh, conversation with us about his game and how it works and how cool it is. I'm excited about that. And Joel, my buddy, look, dude, really nice article. And you are selling people on something that doesn't need to be sold. Uh, you either love solitaire games that really give you no choices uh, other than roll dice or you don't. And uh, while you do a fantastic job of uh, creating narrative out of this and this fantastic narrative, just like B-17, right? This fantastic narrative in uh, The Hunters. Uh, some of the things that you, points you bring up about choices that are available to you, they're, they're really inconsequential things. Uh, facts are you don't have from my viewpoint, my limited play, you don't have a lot of choices in this game. And I'm hoping that The Silent Hunters is going to be a slightly different uh, title and will give us more choices and more uh, things to ponder before we, uh, other than whether or not I need a steam uh, or electric torpedo. That's not a choice. That's just stuff. It doesn't matter. In the end of the day, it doesn't really matter uh, that much. Other good and interesting things about the torpedoes uh, and other bits and pieces in the game. Uh, really well done stuff from from Joel. And I have not read the rest of the magazine. And you may say, well, Kevin, why are you even talking about it? Uh, well, I'm going to get this Golan Heights game. I don't want to read the review and spoil it for myself. Whoa, knock the map. Thanks for playing. Uh, knock the map. I'm not even thinking today. I've been playing board games all day today, and I am tired. So, now, design analysis. This is one thing that I am going to read uh, before I go to bed tonight. I'm looking forward to that. And there are a couple of little, uh, little uh, capsule reviews in here that folks uh, have written about Holdfast and the Battle of Hastings and New York 1776. Lots of, uh, there's some Worthington games and stuff in here, so. And yeah, okay. And then there's the Freedom under Underground Railroad game. Uh, no need for me to talk about that, because that ain't a war game. All right. Really well done. I'm looking forward to next year's uh, issues that come out. I'll be uh, resubscribing. This is $28 for two or three issues a year that's fantastic value and I guess that's what I'd pay more if you want to do it in color I'll pay more uh, I would love to see this in color I think it'd be fabulous uh, you'll kind of contrast that against uh, the counteract or counterfact uh, magazine which is very expensive has the game in it and the quality of the um, the writing while it's good I, I found it to be a little bit frustrating Anyway, carry on with good work here, Roy, and we'll look forward to seeing more from you. And thanks, everybody, for listening in. I know that's just a little bit of a kind of a ranty thing that I went through with those two videos, but uh, it's a ranty day. Later.